What is the smallest length that makes sense in physics? Let's derive the Planck length by looking at these constants. We have the speed of light, you have the reduced Planck's constant, which is just Planck's constant divided by 2 pi. We have g, which is the gravitational constant. And finally, we have Boltzmann's constant. Now, today we only need the first three. What Max Planck originally did was to consider the dimensions of these constants. Now, what do I mean by that? For instance, the dimensions of C can be written with these brackets like that. And because speed is typically just meters per second, we can generalize this for any unit and any dimension. And we can say that C will just have the dimensions of length divided by the dimensions of time, which uh, we can just write this down as L T to the power of minus one. To find the dimensions of Planck's constant, we can just use the E is equal to HF equation, and we can just rearrange that for Planck's constant, which is just E over the frequency. Now, frequency is just one of the time periods, so we can just write this down as one over the time period. We can find the dimensions of energy from any formula for energy, for instance, even a half mv squared. Let's write this down. The dimensions of h will just be equal to the uh, dimensions of energy divided by this. This will equal the dimensions for mass, which I'm going to write as brackets m times speed squared. So that will be L to the power of two multiplied by T raised to the power of minus two. Now let's, let's not forget this factor. So we need to add in another factor of, um, of T over here. And what we're going to get is that the dimensions of H are just going to be m like that. We're going to get a factor of L squared. And then finally, we have a factor of t to the power of minus 1. OK, let's figure out the dimensions of g next, the gravitational constant. In order to do so, we're going to use Newton's law of gravitational attraction. So we know that the magnitude of the gravitational force is just equal to gmm over r squared. We can get that g will be equal to the force times r squared divided by mm. Now, rather than the Force, because the Newton is, uh, is not really fundamental, I'm going to use mass times acceleration. So rather than F right here, I'm going to write MA. I can make this expression even simpler. The dimensions of G will be equal to the dimensions of acceleration, which are going to be L. And then we're going to have t to the power of minus 2. Remember, for instance, acceleration is given in meters per second per second, hence the power of minus 2 here. Then we're going to be multiplying by r squared, which has dimensions of length squared. And let's divide by the dimensions of mass. So I can just literally write it down like that. And these are the fundamental dimensions of the fundamental constants. What the Max Planck thought was, can we rearrange all of those constants into a combination that will just give us the dimension of length? That will be, in a way, the building block of length. Let's try this combination, the square root of h bar times g divided by c to the power of 3. First off, let's check these, uh, these dimensions. So h bar will have the same units as h, which are just here. So we're going to have the square root of the units for m times the units of l squared times t to the power of minus 1, 
multiplied by the units of G. And the units of G are just here. So we have uh, L times L squared. That's going to give us L to the power of 3. So L to the power of 3 times T to the power of minus 2. Or dimensions of T to the power of minus 2. Two. Then we have a factor of m to the power of minus 1. So m to the power of minus 1 right over here at the end. And now we need to divide by the dimensions of the speed of light cubed, which are just L cubed t to the power of minus 3. Okay, now we can do one of my favorite things, that is, to be, that is to be canceling terms out of an equation. So let's do this. So notice that the m's are just going to cancel the dimensions for, for the mass. Uh, we have t to the power of minus 1, t to the power of minus 2, giving us t to the power of minus 3. So that will cancel out. And what we're left with is just the dimensions of l to the power of 5 over l to the power of 3, which uh, of course is just the square root of this dimension, which is just length. And this combination of units, of fundamental units, actually gives us the dimensions of length. Let's calculate this in meters. All we need to do is uh, use some values for those constants. I'm going to be using approximate values. So h, is, uh, h bar is just h over 2 pi. So this will just be equal to 6.63 times 10 to the power of minus 34 over 2 pi. Let's multiply that by g, which is, uh, these are all in SI units, multiply by 6.67 times 10 to the power of minus 11. Let's divide this by the speed of light uh, cubed, which is around 3.0 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. And that's raised to the power of three. If we put this into a calculator, uh, we're going to find the ultimate smallest length in meters and that is approximately 1.61 multiplied by 10 to the power of minus 35 meters and this is the Planck length. According to our current theories, length below this length do not make any physical sense. You get 100% uncertainty uh, in the position of particles and additionally you need a quantum theory of gravity to really understand the fuzziness below this number 1.61 times 10 to the power of minus 35 meters. As you can see, dimensional analysis is incredibly powerful. Now, if you are interested in taking part in physics competitions or physics entrance exams, or you really want to understand physics very well, you need to have a look at my video on using dimensional analysis to solve otherwise impossible problems just over there.